Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Unworthy. Uh, I got my stuff back. Oh yeah, I found this as well. An hour rune. Increases the base damage output by 3. Increases the stamina cost by 15%. So runes are just a... Th I, they're rings, you know? I, I mean, I don't know what to say. I guess they're just rings. Uh, and the game was like, hey, it's a ring. <laughs> Ignore that. Um, later. Hater. So it was this way? Yes. Oh boy. I did a video about dryers at one point. I would have hoped it would have served me better. I'm woefully ill prepared. Well, 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 what do we have here? Still in one piece, are you? Pity. If you have come seeking refuge or salvation in these vacant halls, you will find none. These catacombs once served as a resting chamber for those who were denied passage. That was much long ago. Now the place is nothing but a breeding ground for wretched abominations. You would do well to take heed of the fire breathers. If you do find yourself burning, a good rolling should help to tame the flame. Uh, stop, drop, and roll, of course. Ah. Oh, Mrs. Polite would be so ashamed of me. That was my preschool teacher. It was spelled like polite, but she insisted it was pronounced... Polite. I imagine you're wondering what I'm doing in such a horrid place. Hmm? I am on a path. I am on my path. Long ago did the other half cast me out. Long ago did he remove doubt. Okay. Okay. Oh, the thing. No. The item. Oh, but I need it, though. This is the elevator. <laughs> Which also means that even once the elevator gets to the top, we're still going to have some reason to, to dive down this pit. Because there's the item down there. That's good. That's pretty good. Look, this whole... Like, I came down here and I was like, left is a fucking shithole. So I went right. And I was like, oh, cool. This will make it easier. And then I was able to brave the left. And then brave a little more. And now look at that. We got a shortcut. I guess I'll go right back down, though, because I don't have anything I need to do up here. Did Dark Souls invent the slow elevator? I mean, God, I'd rather be climbing a ladder right now. That, that works me out. I want one of those ladder climbing machines. Like, it's like a treadmill, but it's a ladder. Like, they're probably pretty stupid, right? They only do a certain number of things, but like, I have really, really bad wrists. I might even be able to... I think I'm just bumping the mic with it. Oh, and there's even one of these. Oh, and that's kind of weird. Yeah, I saw that on the map, and I was like, huh, is that another brand down there? Ladies are hitting me. Uh. Alright, well, let's go rebrand myself. What's the point of a brand that heals you? Like, I know that they want to be like... Scooch. I know that they want to be like edgy and be like, oh, it's branding you, the fire, it's burning, you know? But like, if the brand just heals you, then what's the point of a sacrificial brand anyway? Like, I know brands are cool and all. Like, I want a brand. I have a bunch of tattoos and I feel like that's the proper escalation. But like... 
I don't know. I think it's just a brand for the sake of brand. Like, Salt and Sanctuary had a bit of poeticism about the nature of a brand and how it was like a sentence of fire. And that was cool. I can see a little gap on the wall here. Maybe it's even more below me, and I don't know. I don't think it would be here. It's probably just a key item I don't have, but let it be known. But yeah, like, Sultan Sanctuary has, like, uh, a, a bunch of emphasis on, like, candles and fire and fire speaking to you and fire being important and meaning something and doing things. And, like, that was why brands were your ability. But with this one... You're just getting branded because brands are kind of cool, you know? Cool. Um, like... It's, it's brands for its own sake. I saw a couple of really, really uh, low reviews for this game. Like, on, on GOG, on Good Old Games, it only has a 3.6, I think. Um, Lurker's Blood. Cool. But yeah, Ungagan only has a 3.6. This doesn't seem like there's a lot. Because right here, there's a, there's a chunk to the left of it. But I don't know if the chunk is that big. So maybe it's map problems, or maybe there's more to that room. Essence of Altus. Isn't Altus a Dragon Age thing? Like, isn't Dorian in, in, in Inquisition in Altus? And the brand. And then a boss fight. I feel like I should be coming up on one. At the pace that this game... I imagine the pace that this game would have. The Hallow Foundry. Bro, you, you broke your anvil. Oh, he is the anvil. Narcos, the anvil. Oops. Gotta keep an eye on my staminas. Oh, he can roll too. He's got the he's got all my moves. That's really satisfying. And of course, the weapons master can make weapons. I'm imagining that killing this guy is going to give me, like, uh, the ability to level up. Because, like, you know, he, he makes stuff. You would think that he would, you know, allow the player the ability to make stuff. But yeah, I saw a couple of people who were like, yes, the aesthetic is cool and all, but in a game, you need to be able to tell where you are. And so, like, oh, cool, this game is, is all in black and white is, like, a liability because you need to be able to see where you are. Oh, I didn't notice that I was on low health. Whoops. Pardon me, got the sniffles. I know, you'd think that such a cute boy doesn't deserve to have the sniffles, and you'd be right. It's an affront to God that I'm a little sniffly. So I'm going around here, apparently. Although I am back doing this recording, so... Might not be still. Also, I likely don't live near you. Then again, who knows. Well, there goes my shield.
See, I feel like I spend so much time in the second phase. And, like, the first phase is over so quickly. But maybe it's just that, like, the first phase is just so easy. And then, like, you know, there's a whole bunch of time that gets spent in phase two because it's actually hard. Gotta remember the jump slash. Whoops. Nothing like a cross-up to get the day started, huh? Damn. That was just a straight botch. Pardonnez-moi, everyone. Um... Narcos the Anvil. So is he like an unascended guy? Like, is he with the same dude? And Svet, like, ascended and then Narcos didn't ascend? And then that's why Narcos is just kind of shitty? Because he is kind of, you know, fat and ugly. Slumming around down here. You'd think that somebody burdened with the powers of light would be, like, stronger and tougher as well. But maybe the light isn't all it's cracked up to be. Whoops. His little, like, flash sword that he makes is pretty sweet. And it also is like, it's logical that a blacksmith would be able to make a sword. Stamina is at like a premium, you know? He's not that hard. I've gotten to phase three both times. Assuming that the phases are, like, as simple as just, oh, this is when he starts to use that other attack. Like, phase one is just the smash. Phase two is the smash and the slash. Yeah, like that. And then phase three is presumably when he gets the ground to wave. Just footsies. That attack does way more damage than I think it does, is the problem. I'm always like, yeah, I could take this hit. And I cannot. But we've got more areas that we could explore. The problem is that I still don't have a fucking place to spend the stuff that I got from the first guy. Like, as far as I know. I mean, goodness knows I would like it, but... It's not like I can leave either. You can just walk it. It's probably not the intended way. Now, ah, what do I know? It might be. Sometimes people build bosses on purpose to be walked. Like Dinklinker from Dark Souls 2. I don't want to spoil that boss, but there's a boss who I'm referring to in, you know, unobvious terms. It's a hidden secret boss and it's really cool. It's one of my favorite bosses in the Soul series. But the thing that's really cool about it is that you can beat it without rolling and it's not even that hard. Every attack that it does is designed to be walked in addition to being rolled. All right, here's the big whammy. Oh, he's getting more ground waves.
What do these do? Fuck all. Again, way more damage than I think that does. All right, I'm gonna take some shots on him. Hey, we're back. So I tried to do the old Souls game standby of going into a boss room, getting your souls, and then leaving. Uh, but there's no leave, there's no homeward bone, and what's more, saving and quitting doesn't work because it's just a quit. The save in this game is different from Dark Souls. It does not have the system where it auto-saves every couple of seconds. So if I want to get these souls out of here, I gotta do it. So I've decided to do this last one and then give up. Hmm. Love a good cross-up. I also read an interview with this guy. This is his first real game. He made a couple smaller games before. And the look was inspired both by Necessity and by a Ludum Dare uh, game jam game that I think a friend of his made, where you were like a skeleton. It's called Grave. I think you can look up like Grave Ludum Dare and that should give you what you need. And he very intentionally called it, or uh, had prepared to die as the tagline and put it on the website. Because he's like, look, it is Dark Souls. Because he likes Dark Souls. He's actually older than I thought. Um, he's old enough to have been playing like Super Nintendo. Which is a little older than I thought he would have been. The power of giving up seems to be working. Oh! Too early on the roll. I'm gonna do one more because that was a pretty good attempt. If if I if I just bash my head against it, it's because I, I need to go reset. Uh, oh, I, also, I was close to level 7, so I just dashed upstairs and killed those guys. Um, I saw a screenshot of this fight on a website. And uh, the guy's level said 6. So, presumably you can do it at 6. The early stages of this fight feel like slow, you know? Well, just kill me. Come on. That's not a real attempt. I, I did an early botch, so I gotta let him kill me, you know? What am I gonna do? Just keep going with that? Alright, last attempt. But yeah, and then he, he was thinking about, like... what they, they asked him why... Not only did he make a Metroidvania without jumping... But why would you advertise it, you know? Why would you go out of your way to say, this is a Metroidvania that does not have jumping in it? And he said he literally couldn't think of a single Metroidvania that doesn't have jumping. And that's actually a pretty good point. And he was talking about how, like, in a gameplay loop, a lot of enemies don't jump. So they can't meet you aerially. And so there's a lot of stuff in, like, Hollow Knight or Symphony of the Night, for example. Where, like, the fact that you can jump will invalidate a lot of regular enemy attacks. Whereas not jumping means that every enemy means something to you. You know? He was talking about, like, how sometimes 
people will create like a bullet hell style situation, but on the ground. And that means that you miss out on having that bullet hell if you're jumping away from it. Which he is correct about. Like, there have been a lot of fights in Hollow Knight where I was, like, having a really intense, like, cool pitched battle with, like, a regular guy. And I was like, oh, I could also just jump. You know, I could just run away. And you can see that I've been running away in this game here and there. But that hasn't always been an option. Ooh, we did three. Ah, that was back to back. I did the full string. It, hmm. I saw some people say that the damage is just too high. I think that, like, I don't think that that's the case. Um, it might be a little early to be hitting a roadblock, but I'm going to go explore some more. I, I attempted very, very much to try and not like how do I put this in my playthrough of Blasphemous I tried to make sure that like people wouldn't miss content for me doing it off screen because like sometimes you'll have a thing where it's like Hey, while practicing this boss, I just accidentally killed him. Like, that's kind of, that's lame, you know? No one wants to see that. No one wants to see, well, I accidentally killed this boss, and so now you don't see it. Because that is actually pretty lame, you know? And as somebody who makes LPs, that's even something that you yourself should try to avoid. Because, like, when you're making LPs, people should see the game, you know? They should see the important beats of it. Even if you're going to skip through level grinding or something like that. You know, you can still... You still should be able to just say, hey, you know... This is important and people should see it. And what's more, like, you miss out on pieces of, like, triumph. If people aren't seeing, like, the boss fight, then, like, that moment of, like, yes, where you finally do something, then, like, people miss out on it, you know? Like, it's something that people want to avoid. It's something that you should avoid, even. I picked up something from one of these guys. I picked up Lurker's Blood. A single drop will keep a man going for hours. Provides minor stamina regeneration increase. Interesting. Okay, so, and in here, there's more for me to explore. I remember this, see? Then I roll to get the burnout. And we're good. So, I can't go to that thing over there. I talked about this a little, but, like, the game is pretty linear for... Oh, shit. Well, there go those souls. Um, the game is pretty linear for, like, a Metroidvania. Like, I feel like even Symphony of the Night feels a little more open with this. The problem is that, like, so much of this game is like, well, you can't go that way. Because you can't jump. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to hit up. The problem with it is, like, there's a lot where you can't go that way because you can't jump. So you have to deal. Hey, and we're back. Um, I feel like it's kind of a problem when, like, you have a video game where up is used in the modern era. Because, like, back in the day, the reason that up could be used was because nobody was using up for anything. Because if you had a... Oops. Bye, guys. If you had a, um, a platformer, then people would just be platforming with it, you know? Right, this guy. I can't believe I totally forgot that that's just what's over here. 
and it even bounces you back. It doesn't even give you the chance to, like, try to get in there. So I think the only thing I have to do is just bang my head against this dude. That's unfortunate. I'm gonna finish my spiel. But yeah, when you have a game, m like, made in the current era, people are just so much more likely... Probably doesn't taste like rose chicken. It's funny. Essence of Altus. Oh, Essence of the Father. Is that gonna be like the final boss or something? Uh, memory of a common thief grants minor sin. Memory of a townsman grants some sin. Well, I still have no use for those, so those are gonna sit in my pocket, I guess. Um, unless I can backtrack. Um... Yep, so many more times people are using the stick. Because it's better, it feels better. The stick will, like, almost always feel better to use and play with than, like, a controller will. So you have people who are using the stick for, you know, everyday things... And, like, hitting up is really, really hard to not do on the stick just because it might just read your inputs. Especially since now we got to deal with stick drift. Maybe, maybe this is just a me thing, but I never heard about stick drift before this generation. I only heard about it as of the, as of the, like, seventh, or no, are we in the eighth gen? Yeah, we're in the eighth gen of consoles now. I only heard about it, like, as of then. Um, I've never heard about it on, like, the N64 or GameCube. Like, I know that the sticks on a PS2 were a little wobbly, but I've never heard of them actually drifting. And, like, I feel like it's so much more of a problem now. It might just be because, like, COVID means that so many more people are playing video games that, like, the video games working is way more important. I'm going to backtrack just because I want to see. There was that one guy who had so much dialogue that I was like, are you a thing? <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. It is tense to fight them, which is pretty sweet. I must say, it's cool how satisfying that, that actually, like, feels, you know? Um, anyway. So, yeah. Hitting up to use things works better on the NES, you know? Because so many people aren't using the, the D-pad for things. You yeah, no wonder their blood gives you stamina, because goddamn, they are moving. They schmoo. They don't stop attacking. Let's keep it coming. Oh, we hit level 8. And we've almost hit level 9 as well. Alright, that's level 9 then. See, on the one hand, like, I know that the game is supposed to be hard and, like, perhaps, I've discussed this, perhaps this isn't the lesson to learn, but this is a developer who has been like, yes, dark, the point of Dark Souls is that Dark Souls is hard. And I've talked about that where, like, I kind of disagree with that. I disagree with that assessment. I don't really like where people only see Dark Souls as being hard. 
because there's more to it. You know, it's it, it's not that simple, and it shouldn't be that simple. But I digress. Um, but like, just thinking here, Dark Souls isn't unbeatable. Like, people have beaten it, and it's because the game is partitioned out in a very, very clever way. Like, it's not the hardest game in the world. It's difficult, but it's not unspeakable. And it's built in a way where, like, you can play the game. It's not this impossible super beast. And perhaps this is growing pains, because I've, I'm just starting out, and this is admittedly a, something of a new paradigm because, yes, having a Metroidvania without jumping is pretty unusual. Even Blasphemous, which is maybe the hardest, um... Maybe the hardest, like, Metroidvania I can think of. It might be. Um... Even Blasphemous still has jumping. It has a good jump. And one of the things is, is that jumping means that you can include another difficulty level in your game. Because in addition to having like regular gameplay challenges, like in addition to having regular gameplay challenges, like just combat, you can also have the challenge of like, hey, can you jump this gap? Can you do it? And then that's hard, you know? That's cool. Slaughtered him, did you? His primal sin now flows through you. Do you feel it? Sin is so heavy, so delicious. God damn it. Yep, should have talked to him. Boss kills almost always trigger state changes in Souls games. It need not be a burden traveler. It need not corrupt you. Find the Cathedral of the Filth God. This old priest will cleanse your innards. His touch will give you strength. You reek of sin, delicious sin. Perhaps I can interest you in one of my precious finds? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Wow, that's super good. Uh, old gravekeeper's key, a rusted old key. It bears the gravekeeper's insignia, and that's 10k. A massive frayed halberd. Frayed? That's radical. Hold attack to perform a powerful spin attack. Rotting flesh. Splendid, just splendid. You will come back, won't you, friend? So yes, we do have a shop. I should have talked to him first. Feel like a ninny now. Um, I feel good about that then. That's a good place to leave it. Um, I've been Alfred. This has been unworthy. Uh, this is definitely a game with some perhaps flawed decisions in game design, but the game is still good. It runs okay. I haven't seen any crashes. I've heard that you can soft lock yourself, but I've not encountered it yet, and there might be ways to avoid it. And those might have even been patched. Um, because I'm trying to avoid spoilers, but like, you know. Um, but yeah, Unworthy. Um, it's also on Google Games. And then it was based off of a Ludum Dare game jam game called Grave. Uh, which I might play as well. But yeah, I've been Alfred. This has been Unworthy. Everyone have a good day. See ya.